Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome to the Bed and Podcast. I'm Daniel. And I'm Elena. Uh, where we talk about your favorite movies and movies you may have never seen. Uh, we always advise you guys to watch the movies uh, before coming here, but uh, that is your choice. Okay, now this is a new movie that we will be watching. So, once again, we suggest that you guys watch this movie before coming here. But if you guys don't plan on seeing it, that is completely fine. Uh, You guys can just listen to what we are going to talk about, okay? So, let's talk about, just to kind of start us off, let's just talk about Michael Bryce, okay? Now, uh, he's going through, I don't remember what he calls it. A sabbatical. Yes. Yeah, that is perfect. Uh, He's going through one of those, so he pretty much is not allowed to, I guess, kill people. Yeah, no guns, no bodyguarding, none of that. Yeah. And uh, it's something that his therapist had told him. So that's pretty much what he plans on doing in the beginning of the movie. Yes. And uh, that, you know, over time it turns out that's not really what he ends up doing. Because... Um, uh, you know, how everything works out in the end, but, uh, I gotta say, this was honestly a hilarious movie, this was a good one, and, um, yeah, Michael Bryce, it, you, you, he's pretty much just way too stressed out about, really, um, bodyguarding and stuff like that, so... You know, he's put on this, what you call it, sabbatical thing? Yeah, sabbatical. In order to pretty much get away from that life. Um, yeah, he tries to go on vacation where it was rudely interrupted. Yep, it was uh, by uh, Veronica. Or is it Veronica? Yeah, it's uh, Kincaid's, the hitman's wife. Yes. In the first movie. Yeah, she he's just <clears throat> sitting there chilling, reading, I think, uh, a book or something like that with some yeah. some headphones on. And all of a sudden, she just grabs him and takes him behind cover. And all of a sudden, you're pretty much into the action, man. And I think these are one of these movies where you're pretty much allowed to actually uh, jump straight into the action, you know? Yeah. And I only, I, I think that just because it's, it's, it's definitely targeted to be a funny movie. You already know what the last movie is like. Um, so, uh, uh, by the way, the Hitman's Bodyguard is the first movie. So, I would always suggest you guys watch that one before you even watch this one. Because you pretty much, it, it kind of gives you some backstory uh, to Darius Kincaid and Michael Bryce's uh, connections and kind of um, how Veronica, which is um, Darius Kincaid's wife, how um, kind of the, how, how the whole story kind of interconnects and stuff like that, right? So. Uh, I figure we could jump over to Darius Kincaid next and talk a little bit about him. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. I, there's nothing else to really say. It's Samuel L. Jackson. We know what he does in his movies. <laughs> it's fucking funny. Yeah. That's about it. I don't know. Yeah, he he pretty much just he he's pretty much just the same guy, uh, making funny faces, funny reactions, and. Uh, just killing people, being the way he is, you know, and stuff like that. Um, it's just always really fun to watch him be himself, really. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, in this movie, we have the wife's bodyguard, you know, the hitman's wife's bodyguard. So, we're, we're also following Veronica, who is Darius's wife. And she plays, honestly, a humongous character in between helping Michael Bryce cope with his, like, I don't know, himself and everything. And also just being, like, lovey-dovey with Darius. So it's really funny to watch her swing between so many freaking moods. And uh, I just gotta go back to that one scene that was really funny, was... uh, 
the her mom was killed by a shark or something like that yes. <laughs> eaten by a shark and uh i think it was michael's mom was killed by uh, like a 200 pound italian man that was on a ride <laughs> yeah and she got flown into another roller coaster so she died <laughs> so they were both coping with it and yeah i don't know yeah it's just funny because like the way that she had talked about her mom shark attack it was like so gruesome but like i don't know it was as if like she doesn't really like she remembers but she doesn't it, it's a, it doesn't affect her you know what i'm saying yeah so i don't know uh also i just like to point out this one scene because it was so short but yet so funny is whenever uh michael sitting there on the swing set and she comes over to ask if he needs to be pushed and he's yeah. like no it's okay and uh Whenever he steps off of the swing set, he unbuckles his seatbelt. Yeah, he unbuckles <laughs> his little chain buckle. Yeah, and it's just so funny because Michael Bryce is, he's hes pretty much trying to, you know, he, he he's unlicensed in this movie because he lost his license in the first movie. Yeah. And so he's no longer a licensed bodyguard. He's just a bodyguard. And... He's always been this guy that's like, you know, make sure you got your seatbelt on. You know, he's just like, he's on top of everything to make sure that his clients are safe. So, uh, it's really funny to see that, like, even with the small stuff. <laughs> yeah. I just love the shot. It was so good just because, like, it went from them talking to him unclipping it, like, slowly unclipping it. And then standing up. It was just too good. I loved it. And uh, also going back to one of the car chases. Uh, kind of towards like the end of the movie. Whenever he's just like. Uh, oh yes. He didn't put his buckle on. Nope he didn't. And Because he thought he was free and some <laughs> good shit now from being off the sabbatical. But. Yep, and Darius put on his seatbelt because he was like, you know, you could slow down, and he wasn't slowing down. Eventually, they end up hitting, I think, like some roadblock or something, and then he flies through the window, <laughs> and then he gets hit by another car into the water. <laughs> <laughs> and then run over by a boat. <laughs> yes he dies so many times in this movie yeah i mean it yeah it was just so funny to watch him get slapped around it just because i don't know he wasn't being as safe as he typically was i guess yeah. and uh it was just so funny and not only that even at the times that he was trying to be safe during his sabbatical he was still getting pushed and thrown around yeah it was just so funny and uh I guess we'll just go over to the Interpol agent. <clears throat> Not much to say about him. He's just the 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 one dude that we kind of... It is funny to watch him uh, talk to Michael the way he does. Yeah. Because it, it's almost as if, like, Michael's for some reason scared of him, you know? So, and I think... I don't know. It's just funny to watch. And then we got... <clears throat> what a shocker michael bryce's stepdad yes freaking morgan freeman now oh my god their meeting was the funniest the funniest with darius <laughs> kincaid because he's like asking all these questions <laughs> and michael's just like what is it because he's an author is it because he's this is it because he's that yeah. and he's like no why is your dad black? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was so funny whenever he's just like, you need to stop thinking, uh, or you need to like, oh, what was it? You need to stop thinking with your hate and start thinking with your heart or something like that. Yeah. And uh, it was just so funny. <laughs> just because like, I don't know, because it, it's, it's freaking, you know, Ryan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. but so like, you know, he's like, it's because he's the best, you know, selling author of, like, it was yes. just so funny. Just the way he talked about uh, that. And not only that, Darius's face, <laughs> whatever, you know, we're sitting there talking to uh, Michael's stepdad. 
freaking Morgan Freeman. And honestly, oh man, the story turned around so much at the end. And yes, it did. So, spoiler alerts, you guys. You could skip this part. You could skip this entire podcast because this is one giant spoiler right here. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Everything turns around. Morgan Freeman, his stepdad, you would think would be a good guy, is actually not a good guy at all. Nope. He turned the Three Stooges in, as in Darius, his wife, and Michael, turned them in to the other team or whatever. They're, like, fighting battle. I don't fucking know. But turned them in, snitched on them. Then they got trapped. And then all the way at the end... Morgan Freeman is fighting his son, like literally battling his son. Yup, and uh, a while um, he's fighting his son isn't, I believe, I'm trying to think here. I think it's Veronica's fighting the other lady. Yes. Yeah, and then I believe Darius is fighting Zento, which is that one relief. Like, good bodyguard. That no, wasn't during that. He was fighting. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah, that's true. He was fighting Aristotle. Oh, is that? Yeah, Aristotle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Uh, because uh, Veronica ends up killing that one lady. And then she ends up going over and kills. Well, she doesn't necessarily kill Aristotle. They both shoot him. Yeah, they both kill him at the yeah. same time because they're lovers. Yeah, so, I mean, I love to see the way that they connect in the movie because they genuinely look like the happiest, not happiest couple. It's mm-hmm. so funny to watch. And Veronica just wants to be a wife, man. <clears throat> that's, that's all she, she just wants to be a mom. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because she actually has a little bit of connections with the next dude, Aristotle. Um, uh, he's pretty much the, the big head honcho that wants to take it down Europe and rebuild Greece. So, yeah. and, uh, it, it's, it's weird. Cause for a split second, you're thinking Veronica is actually on his side because of their past. Well, she ended up making up pretty much a giant story and everything in order to pretty much get into Aristotle's head because she's a con woman. And uh, pretty much helps, you know, calls Darius and stuff like that and tells them all the information they need. And you kind of have, like, the sense of relief, like, thank God we didn't make it this far with her just for her to turn around and screw us over, you know? So it was good to, yeah. it was good to see that she was mm-hmm. just literally doing, like, one last con on this guy in order to get all up in his feels and stuff. And then make him believe that I don't know they still have something even though they don't yeah so and uh let's go to Magnuson Uh, that was the the one dude that Michael wanted to be like or whatever Mm -hmm. he was the um uh pretty much like he was the vaping dude yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like <laughs> Michael just like oh my god like they're like enemies at this time but he's like oh my god I'm such a huge fan I'm thinking about getting into vaping <laughs> and it's just that. like what it was so funny whenever he said that I couldn't help but laugh my ass off that was I don't know cause like the guy just sits there and he hits his like giant mod and he's just sitting there crackling and like Michael's eyes are just, he's in love. <laughs> yeah, it's literally. <laughs> and it's funny because this Magnuson guy is pretty much Michael, except like a foot taller. Like, this guy is humongous. Yeah, pretty much just another bodyguard that's won the bodyguard wars. <laughs> yep. And uh, Crowley, the lady, she's pretty much kind of got the same uh, thing with the agent. She's pretty much. Uh, She's just in charge of the... What is it? I don't know. Like cops? CIA? Something yeah, like that. Yeah. And um, she, she pretty much is, works with the Interpol agent in order to make all this stuff work. And uh, pretty much get this contract over with. If you want to call it a contract, it's more or less they end up uh, working with Michael 
Darius and Veronica and well technically not Veronica because she was on the boat at the time the yacht yeah. with Aristotle but um technically they uh ended up working with those two in order to have them go out and pretty much stop Europe from pretty much having the virus which would be a whole like pretty much economical shutdown because of those little chips that they were putting into mm -hmm. different like I don't know because it was in the very beginning they end up showing like with the little um S it was a USB and they put it into the the one thing and then it made a giant power shutdown now the electric lines were like yeah. Uh, blowing up and stuff, it pretty much would have completely destroyed Europe, you know? Yeah. And that was his goal, so that he could rebuild Greece, because he is a man of the Greece culture, you know? That Aristotle dude. And, like, I'm so disappointed, but it is funny. It, typically, you don't see Morgan Freeman as the bad guy, but he was the bad guy in this movie. Yeah. And that was really odd. Like, that really, really was weird, because you're just expecting him to be, like, a nice old man, and he's not at all. Yeah, the loving dad that you thought he was. Yep, yeah, he turns out not to be, man. He turns out not to be. And, uh, oh, man. Yeah, I, I just gotta say, this is a great movie. This was a really good movie. It's so funny. It um, was, it really was. Yeah, uh, I... I think it's just like the way that Michael or the way that Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson connect is just hilarious. Yeah, and not only that, the way that Gab Gabriella Wright, which is Veronica, also connects with Ryan is hilarious. Yeah. It just, uh, I don't know. It's it's just so funny to watch the way that they all connect and stuff like that because, you know, those three people they they i don't know it's just so hilarious to watch them argue or yeah. bond or whatever it is so i i really i don't know if they're gonna make a third movie but this one this one was really good i would honestly love to see a third movie just because like this like this bond between these three characters you know, Michael, Darius, and Veronica is so freaking hilarious to watch. Yeah, it is. So, I would love to see a third one. Um, although, we're at this point where I think that the next bad guy could probably be the Interpol agent. You yeah. Know? Because <laughs> they pretty much killed everybody else, you know, that yeah. were bad guys. So, I mean, that's like the only thing. And a little funny part at the end was you thinking that. Oh my gosh. So the Interpol agent gets this paper for Ryan Reynolds, also known as Michael Bryce, to sign at the end when they've defeated the bad guys. And he's like, oh my gosh, you know, like you guys got me my license back to Darius and Veronica. And he just signs the paper and then. Veronica takes it and holds it to her chest and is like doing a little prayer thing. <laughs> and Darius and Michael are like, what are you doing? And then Veronica's just like, you signed the adoption papers. You're our son. And so Darius and Michael both stand up and obviously they're like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, and that's pretty much how it ends. Very funny end scene. Yeah, because, uh, you know, Veronica wants a kid. But Darius was lying and pretty much saying that, you know, uh, something along the lines of... He was pretty much hiding it from her that his left ball doesn't work because he got it shot at one point. So, eventually they ended up discussing through a call. Um, that like, they should adopt. And, yes. And, you know, we're sorry and everything. And, you know, they agreed they'll adopt. Yeah, and that's where Veronica got the, the pretty much the idea to adopt Michael because... Michael doesn't even have, a, you know, a stepdad now. He doesn't have a mom. He doesn't have... I, they don't even know his real dad. Yeah. So, the, you know, he, he pretty much doesn't have any parents. <laughs> even though he's technically not even... I don't, I don't really know the legal thing. 
but I believe once you're over a certain age, you're allowed to adopt. Now, I didn't even know, and I'm not too sure if you can adopt somebody who's an adult. I don't think. But maybe in Europe you can. Yeah, maybe so, there. I don't yeah. know. And, uh, but it was hilarious, honestly, because it was like not really expected. You genuinely thought that he got his license back and you were yeah. excited for him because that's what it made it seem like. And Veronica was so happy for him. I, I thought that she was just genuinely happy for him. Yeah. And uh, now she's happy because she finally got her... Child. Her, her, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty oh much. Oh, my gosh. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to ask you real quick. Rating. What would you give this movie? This movie... i give it a seven. Seven? Okay. Yeah. Why, why only a seven? only a seven that's still a high rating i just think that this movie was a lot of things you can get lost in it if you don't pay attention to every detail it was fast paced but not at the same time mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know i give it a seven okay i was gonna give it an eight personally so um now like I think the reason that people may have felt the way they did about this movie was because of how fast everything felt. Yeah. Because it was, um, the, the thing is, is like with the last movie, there was a lot of character build up and a lot of getting to know each character and stuff like that in the first movie. Yeah. This one pretty much just jumps right into it with the characters. Mm -hmm. And that's what always makes it harder with the second movie to make the second movie good is like that character build up you know what i'm saying yeah so and uh i just wanted to say once again screw the rotten tomatoes i hate them oh. they gave it 25 percent. it just i i don't like the rotten tomatoes we don't even care about them imdb gave it a 6.2 i i have a feeling that uh th that would make sense you know, I think that's not where I would rate it, but for, like, I guess a group of people to rate it. Yeah. It would make sense for some people to be mixed feelings about it, you know, because the action was good. I think that the action wasn't actually near as much as it was in the first movie. It almost seemed like they had a smaller budget this movie because of, like, how much... I don't know if the budget... I don't know. It just seemed almost like the budget was a little bit smaller in this one, in my opinion. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not 100% sure. I don't know. Uh, I think regardless uh, of budget or whatever it may be, I think that this was honestly a good movie mm -hmm. that I would totally um, recommend this to anybody. So if you guys haven't seen this movie... Go out to the theaters, watch it, uh, or just watch it like we did in our house. Um, that's also an option. But, yeah, um, I'm assuming that you guys had watched it. And if you guys want to leave your own rating down below, uh, if you are on YouTube at least, uh, you guys can do that. Let me know what you guys thought of it. And... Uh, you can find us on Spotify, YouTube, a couple other podcast directories. But uh, mostly, the ones that I try to push most is Spotify and YouTube. Um, that's where you can find us and listen to the Bed In Podcast where we do these movie reviews. A lot of fun. A lot of fun here. We're actually uh, having an upcoming guest here soon. So pretty excited about that. Can't wait to do that. Yeah. And yeah. Um, anything else you have to say about the movie? No. No? All no. Right. We'll catch y'all next time. Yep. Sounds good. Goodbye.